And if you ever have trouble, if you ever have trouble finding the link, you search your email for panelist. Well, I, I found it on okay. the 10 site. So yeah. 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 But the panelists will get you right in. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We're all here. We have a quorum. Uh, so I believe it's time for me to open the meeting uh, with our lovely preamble. Uh, good evening, everyone. It is February 27th, 2023 at 6.36 p.m. I am Robin Fordham, Chair of the Historical Commission of Amherst, Massachusetts. And pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A section 18 and pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended by chapter 22 of the acts of 2022 and extended again by the state legislature on July 14th, 2022 and signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This public hearing and public meeting of the town of Amherst Historical Commission is being conducted by a remote participation. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. Uh, and so, we're going to move this meeting consists of one public hearing, so I believe I'm moving to the next part of our preamble here, which is that in accordance with the provisions of MGL chapter 40A and article 3.60 of Amherst general bylaws preservation of historically significant buildings. Uh, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties of interest. The Amherst Historical Commission is holding this public hearing to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following demolition application request. And the property is 260 Leverett Road. And this is a request to demolish a Nate. I'm sorry, I don't have that exact language in front of me. Sure, uh, it's a request to demolish a circa 1830 single family home and any attached structures. Oh, there it is. I do have it. <laughs> uh, so with that, um, I am opening the public hearing and taking the testimony uh, first with a report from the applicant. All right, Kevin, I'm, I'm promoting you to panelists. That means you can share your screen and just um, speak at will. And then I have all the documents available if you need me to share a screen or anything. Good evening. Oh, um, you know what, Nate? I forgot to take a roll call of attendance. Oh, yes. Do that now. Sure. Okay. So, a uh, roll call of attendance. Um, when everybody's name in front of me, but when I call your name, uh, say aye for present. Uh, Madeline Helmer. Present. How do you start up? Present. Uh. Becky, oh my God, Lockwood. Lockwood, <laughs> present. <laughs> it's not on the screen. Uh, neither is mine. Uh, yeah. Hat off is absent and Robin Fordham present. Okay. So thanks, Kevin. If you want to give us a little bit of a presentation or do you want me to pull up some images? If we could pull up the house picture, that'd be great, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Let's do it this way. Do you prefer Nathan or Nathaniel? Nate or Nathaniel, I guess. Like Nate, okay. Mm -hmm. So let's do, here's a Google Street View from, that was included with the application, if that's visible for everyone. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, it's an old house. It's, the good thing about it is it's a cute little old farmhouse. The terrible thing about it is it's a cute little old farmhouse. Um, it's just not tenable right now. It's freezing cold. You have to run the heat almost nonstop or get a fire going to keep to make it comfortable. The bedrooms are upstairs. The single bathroom is downstairs. The stairs are not to code. They're very steep and a hazard for older people. And it's my intention to age in place here, but also 
to have parents stay with us periodically. So the house just doesn't fit what we want to do, what we need to do. Um, we've looked at options of gutting it, remodeling it, but none of those address those core concerns. Um, if we take down the back half of the house and build an addition, that could do it, but that adds at least $200,000 to the overall cost because the front would still have to be gutted so it can integrate it into the, the new addition. Um, we just don't have that kind of money. Um, so yeah, the request is that we can, we take it down and build on roughly on that footprint, a new house, a post and beam structure that matches the other houses in the neighborhood. Thanks. So uh, with that, we have any in it additional information from staff, Nate? Yeah, I'll say that the commission conducted a site visit today. Uh, Robin, Madeline, Hetty, and myself were there. We walked around the exterior and then in the interior um, just to take a closer look, um, you know, just clarify the condition of the property. And so here's an image from today. And the house is in, is in good shape. It's been maintained. Uh, you know, there is some work along, you know, some of the fascia on the north side in certain aspects. But by and large, it's, you know, we didn't see any visible rot or decay. You know, sometimes that's the case here where you know, a sill is uh, rotting or there's, you know, something, you know, structurally really unsound. Uh, here's another image, um, kind of the south facing wall and then the corner, uh, the east side facing, I guess it's kind of east. Um, facing the road. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it has new electrical upgraded service. Uh, the chimney on the north side, I'll just scroll down, or um, as you see here on the right side, is not original to the house. Uh, and here is an image of that. Um, you know, that's the fireplace that the owner mentioned using to keep it warm. There's another central chimney that was added at some point as well to incorporate um, a heating system. Um, and then for other information, you know, other than the application, I didn't really, there isn't a lot for this uh, area of town. And so, you know, in the application, we had the form B inventory form, an older aerial photograph, and, um, and that's really about it, to tell you the truth. Um, and then I forwarded some information this afternoon to commission members regarding um, just a little bit more information on um, Austin Loomis, a um, little bit of information on his family and um, uh, his status as a farmer and as a deacon. Okay, so um, the next uh, order of business would be to take questions from commission members, a reminder to commission members that these are questions uh, for the applicant and for town staff. This is not where we deliberate yet. So if anybody has any questions, just feel free to raise their hand or go ahead and speak. Becky? I, I'm sorry I couldn't attend the meeting today. I did drive by and look at the outside. Mm -hmm. But I have questions about the inside. Like, what about the plumbing, the electrical system? Um, is are there lead pipes? Do you have to do any work on, on those things if you were to, uh, you know, rehabilitate it in some way? Um, I, I can't tell you for sure. I don't know. I think most of the electric has been upgraded. Okay. For the plumbing, I, I don't know. There could very well be lead here. Um, I don't think any effort went into changing any sort of plumbing, but I do think the electrical has been upgraded. Madeline or Hattie, do you have any questions? Madeline? Yeah, I'd like to hear a little bit more about um, your considerations for retaining the exterior. And you said it would add $200,000 to the overall building costs. and. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you came to that number and maybe who you consulted? Sure. Um, our builder is um, the uh, post and beam, Habitat post and beam. And the pricing that they've worked out for a brand new house on the footprint is almost the same as what an addition would cost. And in, on top of the cost of the addition, you would have to gut this place 
get the old original house to make it one comfortable again, livable, insulated, new windows, new heating system, that sort of thing. And then also to integrate it into the new addition. So you would be almost doing two major projects at the same time. Our designer is Huckle, Huckle May. Um, and they're over in Deerfield. Patty, did you have any questions? Um, I don't think so. I think um, Kevin answered a lot of questions as during the site visit. So it was really helpful to, to see the place and um, the, the, the site as well, you know, the property as a whole. No, I'm, I'm, back. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. okay. Great, thank you. Okay, um, so then we can move on to uh, any public comment. Um, if there are members of the public who would like to comment, you can go ahead and raise your hand and Nate will let you into the meeting. Do you wanna have just some, allow them to speak or have them come in as a panelist, Robin? Oh, uh, does it matter? Oh, no, not really. Just takes a, another second to have them become a panelist. Okay, I mean, just speaking is fine, yeah. Sure. All right, Hilda, I see your hand. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm just curious. If somebody wanted to move the house, is there any interior woodwork that's equivalent to what I see on the outside or better? Or is that um, pretty much gone, replaced with no, in other words, is there any 1830 woodwork left inside? Um, no, honestly, the, the place has been remodeled, I think, multiple times on the inside. There are a few older planks in the very back of the house that we'd like to save and integrate into a new building if possible. What's the path? I didn't hear you. Oh, sure. Um, there is, there's nothing new on the, in, nothing in the inside of the house ties back to 1830. It's been remodeled multiple times. Um, there are some old planks in the back that oh, we'd like planks. to. Yes, planks, yeah, that we'd like to integrate into a new home someday, um, but very few, very little, thanks. Did you have any further comments, Hilda? Me, no, no, I was just curious about that one. Okay, thank you. It's the place where it'd be, it'd be difficult to move it because it's so far from any place or anybody I know has a lot. Okay, thank you. Um, if there are any other members of the public who wish to make a comment, they can raise their hands. Uh, I see Annie Tiberio has raised her hand. Hi, hey, Annie, you can unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, Kevin, I'm uh, one of your neighbors down the road, and my uh, the purpose for being here was just out of concern for wondering what was going to happen to the property. We had, um, you know, fantasies of a development going in or something. So, we're, I'm glad to hear that, that that that's not the case. It's a beautiful property, and um, it's got so much life left in it. I'm delighted that it won't be dead and gone for good and erased from the uh from the from the earth um it's the, the i understand your, your problem with the house i've lived in many old houses and they aren't always conducive to um modern living or uh economical or environmental living um but i'm just i was here to reassure myself that we weren't going to be looking at a a lot more traffic and a development going in excellent N nice to meet you um Nice to meet you too. <laughs> no, when, when we first looked at the place, um, that was the intent. They had divided it up into five buildable lots. Mm. Um, and my wife and I traveled up from Washington, D.C. to see it. And like we came to the same conclusion you have, it's a beautiful property and it would be a sin to chop it up in, into build, buildable lots. So we bought the entire property, all the lots, as one, um, always with the intention of making the house something we could gracefully age in, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks for the kind words. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for buying the whole thing and yeah. and preserving it as it is. It's I don't know if the greenhouse is workable or the barn or any of those things, but it 
Um, if I could have afforded it, I might have done it. But anyway, I wish you well, and I'll look forward to meeting you someday. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to just weigh in. I, I Annie and I live together. I'm Paul Cameron. We, we're just across the road, up uh, a little closer to the Leverett Line. We're at 365 on the east side. Gotcha. So we, we go by there all the time. And like Annie said, we're just we were curious about what's going to happen, you know, once this house, if if it's demolished, what's going to happen? And of course, as she said, our fear was already stated, but I, I think you've put that to rest. You bought four other lots, so that won't happen. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Great. Great. No, we, we plan on farming. Um, oh, good. Uh, we, we want to bring this back to raising vegetables and fruit. That's our plan. Oh, great. That's great. Uh, that would be a welcome addition to the, to the, uh, to the street. Yeah, to the stop, stop by any time. If you see my car in the driveway, anytime. Okay. You're not living there now, are you? I am, sir. Oh, oh you are. Okay. 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 And what was your name again? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin, Kevin O'Brien. Yeah. Okay, well, if we see you, we'll uh, stop in and say hello. We Excellent. just up the street. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so as I see no other members of the public for public comment, uh, we will close the comment, public comment section. And then, Nate, I believe your a suggestion uh, previously was that we just deliberate with the meeting open in case there are questions. Is that your general recommendation? Yeah, I think we can keep the hearing open for a bit just to see if any more information is presented or discussed. Um, you know, then we can always close it with one motion um, okay. you know, to do, you know, but I think we can just continue okay. to ask questions or have a discussion with the commission. Okay. So I could say that, you know, Kevin, the process is the building has already been found to be significant and that's what moved it to a hearing. And so the commission's role tonight is to, to decide whether the building should be properly preserved. And that would mean issuing a 12 month delay. And so the commission can issue a, a, you know, a preferably preserved order, which um, you know, stops demolition for 12 months or a, a demolition authorization, allowing you to move to a building permit to demolish. And so um, that's the discussion. And then if a delay is issued, oftentimes the commission likes to work with the owner to come up with, um, you know, different ideas or strategies. And so we would be reaching out to you to see if we could, you know, hire, even hire another architect or engineer or do a feasibility study or something, or see if we could move the house or, you know, what are the possible solutions? Um, you know, and it, it could be that it still results in um, a demolition, but maybe there's ways to work even with a uh, design to mimic some of the massing even or something of a new structure. So there's, you know, different ideas that could be discussed during a demolition. Okay, I don't so, want to jump the gun, so it's really the commission if they have any other questions or discussion. Yeah, so um, I wanted to open up to commission members uh, for discussion. And um, I just wanted to remind everyone, um, although we've had some discussion about how the property will or won't be used, um, what is in our purview is about this particular building it, as a historic resource and its value to the community of Amherst and what did that uh, would be a significant loss if it were demolished. So if uh, commission members wanted to make a comment or uh, deliberate at this time, they can go ahead and raise their hands or feel free to speak. So I think for me, um, I was really interested to be there today, partly because from East Leverett Road up Leverett Road, it seemed to me that there had been a number of new builds in that in that neighborhood along Leverett Road that I um, they seem very new to me maybe in the last couple of years. Um, and what strikes me about 260 Leverett Road is that the house <clears throat> is really kind of close to the road um, and it's it's additional structures, it's barns and you know other outbuildings and the greenhouse which of course is is much newer in um on the site uh, are are quite 
are quite visible from the street and convey a, a sense of what that road was like historically um, in a way that um, some of the other houses don't. Um, the whole thing kind of works together, um, you know, it, uh, but it's, it's also a, an architectural style that is pretty important in terms of telling America's um, story architect in architecturally speaking even though it's a modest example the house has a lot of charm Hilda you asked about interior fittings and I, I think Kevin's right there isn't a whole heck of a lot that's original but you know the the, the ceilings are uh, commensurate with the house it being a sort of small rural um, Greek revival example from that time period and the, the staircase up to the second floor is very charming. Um, maybe maybe charming isn't the word you would use if you um, were 85 years old and, and heading up to bed. Um, but, you know, it had, it, it seemed to me to have a lot of integrity as, as a building um, sitting on its, on its immediate site in relation to the road. So that wasn't a question. I hope that's okay. I'm kind of no. We're you know, we're deliberate. This deliberate. is a deliberate. deliberating. That's actually really <laughs> helpful. Um, Madeline or Becky, did you want to jump in, or I can if you're not ready yet? Madeline, you look like you're about to say something. <laughs> okay, I, I'll I'll jump in at this point. I want to echo uh, what Hetty said. Um, you know, it's always challenging when a demolition request come before us and um uh this house in particular uh its character defining features are so strong and so um so visible from the public way and so clearly a part of what is um a very old part of Amherst um I've been trained recently I re received my degree recently and I've been training to learn how to do the arc the uh historical research on properties like this and looking at the map from 1833 and the census records and finding uh, Austin Loomis's a gravestone, which notes that he was the deacon. He had the North Congregation, North Amherst Congregational Church in front of our CPA committee um, looking for funds for restoration. And, and I think, uh, well, I, I didn't define it today. He, he was a Congregationalist, I'm assuming <laughs> that was his congregation. Um, so I think the setback and the architecture and the setting are um, are, are just really strong um, strong reasons to see this as a preferentially preserved building and um, to to see it as something that we would want to impose a delay on so that we could um, find a, a solution somewhere between uh, uh, that would not be complete demolition uh, without any sort of attempt for uh, a better outcome. And Madeline or Becky, did you want to make a comment? Yeah, I don't have much to add um, because I just agree with what you and Hetty have said. Um, and it, it, yeah, it is highly visible and um, I mean it's a really lovely house <laughs> um, it, was, it was neat to see it today um, and yeah I think it would be good to to work maybe try and work together to, to figure out a solution yeah I feel like the full context of the house is still there which is it's so unusual um, something to consider Becky, did you want to make a comment? I completely agree. Um, taking some time to to try and help find another another way to, to to preserve the house would would be the most preferable outcome. And was there any more comment from commission members or Nate? No, I don't have any. Okay. Anything um, I can ask members of the public again if they have any further comment or questions. If so, raise your hand. Uh, 
Okay, I'm not seeing any raised hands. So I think at this point we would um, make a motion, motion to close the hearing and then go ahead with the vote. Is that right, Nate? Yep. Okay, so. Um, uh, a couple of questions. Yep. Um, okay, one year. Does the clock start from when I put the application in or from today? It's from the vote of the preferably preserved. I mean, I, yeah, so I'd have to confirm that, but it's not from the time of application because the commission could have voted tonight to allow demolition. Right. So what we'll do is we, the town will file the preservation order if it moves forward with the town clerk. That's a confirm with the bylaw exactly when the clock starts. Um, but you'll be notified when that, you know, when, when that is. So we have, you know, seven days or something to, so many days to file a, um, to file it with the town clerk and with the building commissioner. Okay. Is there any intent to identify historically significant buildings in advance of someone purchasing? This, this just seems very unfair to find out about this five years after I bought the place. Well, I think that, um, you know, we have mentioned this at the site. Other, visit that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of it would be, you know, due diligence on the, a buyer's part and then also on the realtor or someone you're working with. Uh, right. So this isn't, um, you know, in Amherst, there aren't buildings that are prevented from being delayed necessarily. So even in local historic districts or national register districts, buildings could be demolished depending on plans or what, what you know, what the project is. So but there isn't kind of a categorically a preserved building in town. I think some of it would be just knowing that it's an older structure, uh, you know, what, what does a town or municipalities have in place for pre protections? And so it varies, especially in Massachusetts, each community may have a different level of protection or bylaw or regulation. Uh, I just think that, you know, it, what, to me, if, if I saw that house, I would think, well, geez, it's early 19th century, it's an older house, you know, the stairs might be steep, it might need a lot of work. You know, what, what am I planning to do? Um, you know, do I need to research that before I purchase it? I mean, I, you know, there's not much more to say. I, I think it's unfortunate that the real, the real estate, you know, the real estate listing didn't have some mention or some acknowledgement of, of it. But. Yeah. Yeah, I think I read too much into the plaque my neighbor has that identifies it as an old building. Um, okay. So do we have a motion to close the hearing? I, I can make that motion. Okay, so second. I'll second. Okay, and then we'll go to a roll call vote. Uh, Becky Hawkwood. We're motion. voting to close the hearing, right? That's correct, yeah. yes. Yes. Uh, Madeline Helmer. Yes. Patty Startup. Yes. I'm Robin Ford on my vote yes as well. So the hearing is closed with a vote four to zero. Uh, we have deliberated. Do we have a motion from the commissioners to uh, impose demolition delay or issue a demolition permit? I vote that we impose a demolition delay and that the building be preferably preserved. Okay, do I have a second? I can second that. Second. Okay, Madeline has seconded, so we'll go to a roll call vote again. Uh, uh, I just, start... any, oh. any discussion? Any, sorry, oh. any further discussion on that? Any discussion, further discussion <laughs> among commissioners? <laughs> no, okay. All right, uh, so we'll go to a roll call vote. Uh, I'll start with Hattie Startup. Uh, this is a motion to issue a demolition delay on 260 Leverett Road. I say aye. Heidi says hi. Madeline Helmer. Aye. Uh, Becky Lockwood. Aye. And Robin Fordham, I vote aye as well. Uh, so that's four to zero vote to impose a demolition delay. Uh, Nate, I will let you take it from here in terms of what the applicant and the town uh, can engage in going forward. Sure, yeah, I was just looking at the bylaw to try to see when exactly the delay. Uh, you know when it yeah. uh, when it starts, um, and I can let you know, Kevin, over email. Um, so yeah, I you know I think that once you know once a delay is issued, it the commission and staff try to work with an owner to like you know as we mentioned, come up with 
alternatives to demolition. And so it could be engaging an architect to have uh, other plans or cost estimates, you know, seeing ways that the front of the house could be preserved, seeing how the massing could work together. And so, uh, you know, even moving the house is an option, although that's something that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot involved there. The town does have Community Preservation Act funding, CPA funding that uh, can be allocated to private property for preservation and rehabilitation. And so it's something that if you're interested in, we can help you apply. It's a annual cycle. So the, the applications are due until the fall and then they're discussed and voted on uh, around now actually. So this year's cycle is, is somewhat concluding, but you know, it'll start again next year in September, August, September. And so there is um, you know, CPA funding that would, could support this project. It could also be used for the barn or other outbuildings as well. Uh, you know, I just, I'll, I'll make mention of that uh, in the future. Uh, can, yeah, can, so I, you, can you clarify what I'm just, I, I was thinking about CPA funds too as well. And I'm thinking like, I mean, they certain, certainly couldn't be used to um, renovate the interior, to renovate the interior, but the, I mean, I would think they could be used. It, it's sort of a question of what they could be, how, how you would interpret preservation. Like um, I would imagine a heating system upgrade or plumbing upgrades or something like that, um, that would allow the, the building to stay. It just, it's a little, I think of it generally, you know, when we look at the North Amherst church and, you know, you've got rotting clapboards and things like that, that are pretty obvious preservation issues. But um, yeah, it would be good to explore what might apply in this particular circumstance before kind of going too far down that road, since it's already in such good condition. At the same time, I imagine there's something there that would apply. Right, so CPA is for the preservation of the structure or rehabilitation of the structure. So, uh, you know, sometimes things that are integral like heating or cooling or plumbing may be eligible, you know, foundation, building envelope. And so, you know, I, I can't say exactly what, you know, what the project may be, but you know, we, we have done, you know, a heating system can preserve a structure foundation work. Uh, so, you know, if you were saying there's costs to um, manage that with having an addition. And so depending on how that could be framed or worked out together, then, you know, there is possibility of using CPA funds for some of the work on the, the you know, the existing structure or structure. So, you, yeah. know, I, you know, without, right, without saying yes, I mean, I, I'm assuming there's eligibility there. Yeah, um, and I think I'm reminded uh, uh, that that Jane made clear that um, that rehabilitation includes um, changes for accessibility. That that historical structures, um, you know, that that their accessibility is an issue, and so there's the potential for that accessibility issue to be part of of rehabilitating it for for current use. That's that's a definition under rehabilitation. So. That might be might be possible as well. I don't want to I don't want to confirm anything, but mm -hmm. okay. okay. Um, so at this point, uh, we want to thank you for coming before our commission. I also wanted to thank you for the site visit this afternoon. It was really lovely to see your property. Um, and Nate and we'll be in touch with you. And as far as the commission is concerned, I think at this point we are just ready for a motion to adjourn. Nate wants to correct me on that part. <laughs> no, that's good. I mean, Kevin, we'll be in touch and then you know we can talk about next steps or what you'd like, you know, what kind of work you'd like the commissioner or staff to look into. Okay. Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Or Oh, oh Teddy, Teddy is so moved. Second. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> so the meeting is uh, adjourned at 7 or 9 p.m. Thank you, everybody, for your time and have a good evening. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> okay. Thanks, and Kevin, thank you so much for joining you, us. Kevin. Good luck, Kevin. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye. bye, -bye.